Greetings, hello, welcome everyone, welcome to Dev Chatter. Uh, I am just getting us started here. Uh, if you are new, uh, welcome. Feel free to follow along, watch, chat if you like. Uh, if you would rather stay silent, you're welcome to stay silent. Uh, either way, greetings, hello, happy Saturday everyone. Uh, should be a fun stream today. Um, we are going to be uh, doing uh, an interesting little project today. So this is going to be a small, uh, a, I should say, a self-contained task that we're going to try to do today. I want to approach this as a little bit of a, um, almost a how-to, because we've done this once before, so um, I at least, you know, sort of know how to do it. That's not to say that this is going to be like a, a pre-prepared, you know, like, I've scripted all the lines or anything like that. It's just I should remember a little bit about how to do it because we did it last week. So the question everybody's going to be asking is, well, Brendan, what are we doing today? And that is um, we are going to set up our color switcher application. So uh, if you look around uh, on our stream here, you'll see little bits of light like here, and there's a little one there and you'll notice up at the top there are some little bits of color that are moving around the screen now that's just an HTML page uh, that I have overlaying this stream and it's just moving around uh, now what I set up for that was just a simple little signal R piece that you know watches chat and looks for uh, I should say that our program just watches chat and listens for uh, colors to be mentioned in chat. And when you mention a color, uh, it will update the overlay here by communicating to it through SignalR. And that's how the application works. It's fairly simple. Uh, I didn't really do anything complicated with it at all because I was like, let's just build a thing that does that and only that. Doesn't do any, any other chat stuff, nothing else. It's just a simple standalone program. Uh, so, for example, I could type into the chat room blue, and all of a sudden the overlay turns blue. I could type in yellow, and it'll turn yellow. I could do some really bright colors like lime, and we'll get that. Uh, in addition, I could go in here and uh, I could type in hex codes, and it'll turn gray when I do that. Uh, or I could, say, type in, um, I don't know, uh, a six-digit hex code, and that should turn to a nice reddish color. So, essentially, we just watch for colors and do that. Simple little program uh, to be able to do some of this stuff. Uh, hey, average guy, welcome. And, uh, Andre, I should have said hi to you as well when I got here. And uh, hello to anyone that is silent in the stream. As I said, you never have to talk. Um, okay, so there's a couple of things that you need to do before you get this going. So... Right now, our application, uh, I've got it running, it's right here, so we're running this out of Visual Studio today, which is not normally how we do it, uh, but I, since we're working on it today, I figured why not. So, the program right here is, so the way that I set this one up, I set this one up basically as a developer might set it up. So I have already gotten an auth token, and I actually just gave this program an OAuth token. Now, that works great for me because I can get myself an OAuth token and alter a config file and it runs just fine. Uh, no, no problem, average guy. So this application that we're building here, and I should clarify that, uh, so good, good call on that part. Uh, this is a system tray only application that we're running. So there is no window, there's nothing. When this starts up, I just have a little system tray icon that pops up. And when that system tray icon is running, um, the application uh, both is connected to Twitch to monitor chat and also spun up its own little web application. So uh, if I open up Solution Explorer here, you'll see that uh, this is a WinForms application right here. Uh, again, system tray only, so I didn't worry about having anything more advanced than that. Uh, and then the web application here is actually being uh, like served up through the WinForms app. So we're not starting this web app. In fact, um, I'm pretty sure I left this as throwing an exception. If I load up program here, yep, there it is. So the program main throws an exception, which means we are not running that web app. I promise you. Uh, instead, 
we are taking the contents of that. We are taking like the the DLL itself and spinning that up as it as its own web server. So this actually gets hosted through our WinForms app over here. And then this is just you know some uh, code that I pulled out into a separate library for the sake of pulling it out into a separate library in case it needs to get used by both systems. So makes sense. Uh, because obviously Color Switcher needs to reference web, so if web had to reference something in Color Switcher as well, that would be a circular dependency, and we don't want that. So we pulled out some code into the class library. All right. So the next thing that I want to take a look at is the um, the way that we set this stuff up. I'm fairly certain, and just so I don't have like a giant snafu here on on stream, um, I am going to go ahead and off screen open up that uh, file just to make sure that uh, I I'm using a. Um, uh, a user secrets file. That's the word I was going for. Uh, a user secrets file. Uh, I am. Okay, cool. Alright, so I can show this. So my app settings is right here. And you'll see that I've got a couple of things. There's uh, only a few things here in our app settings. The first one is, uh, this is the username that the bot is running as. So when the bot logged into chat, in order to give me a little confirmation that it was in here, uh, it actually came in and it said, um, what did it say? Hang on. It says, hello from the bot. So I should be able to find that text in here. Uh, hello from the bot. Let's find that. Okay. So when the bot connects, it says, hello from the bot. And it does that from the bot's account. Now, the other thing in here, and this I'm trying to explain basically how these connections work and how this stuff happens, because I want to explain to people what's going on. So the channel in this case is what channel I want it to join. So I want it to log in with this username and connect to that channel. And the user ID for that username should be this one, unless I flipped my username, which I might have. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll be fair there, uh, because... Uh, I might, be I might be using the user ID to connect to the Twitch API and uh, do, do some stuff that way, maybe? I don't remember. I don't remember what I did with this application. It's been a while since we've touched this one. The access token, though, is the important thing. So right here, it just says in secrets. Now, the reason why it says that is because, in order, like for my own security, so I can commit this to a GitHub repository without putting my own OAuth token out there. Um, I have hidden this access token. So the access token uh, that actually is, is in my user secrets file, so it's elsewhere on my computer so it doesn't get committed, uh, would look something like this. So it's gonna be OAuth and then a colon, and then it's gonna have like, you know, some gibberishy thing, right? Um, I just spam the keyboard, obviously, for this. This is not a real OAuth token, uh, and it's not even gonna be the right format, but this is kind of the idea. So essentially, the way that OAuth works is you get this big old token that just says, hey, uh, when you receive requests with this user ID and this token, this is sort of like a temporary permission password. So it's sort of like when I log into the website, I tell the website, hey, yeah, you can give uh, Brendan's color switcher application temporary access. Now, I can always go into my account and I can revoke this OAuth token and I can say that token is no longer allowed to do that. Um, exactly. So, um, as Average Guy mentions there, um, if you are scared about uploading code to uploading stuff to GitHub, it's important to learn about things like user secrets so that you don't accidentally do that. So, in this file, this is the one that gets committed. I don't have my OAuth token in here, so there's no concern about that. All right, let's get to the next step. So what I want to do in this application, so right now the way that we authenticate this is I, Brendan, go out, I get an OAuth token using other means, and I put that in my user secrets file. So it's just hard-coded in my user secrets file, and it works, right? It, I mean, it's fine. It, it does its job. However, that is not necessarily 
the best approach in production. Let's take a look at our startup file. Actually, let's just look for user secrets. Did I call it somewhere? Uh, let's do this. User secrets. Here it is. <laughs> and and for anyone that's worried that I just showed my, my user secret here, no. This is not my user secret. Uh, this is the GUID uh, that is used uh, to reference my user secrets file. So on my computer uh, is a file inside of a folder and this folder is the one for this project. So um, anyone that would that would run this same project and do this would have a folder with this GUID and that's where the user secrets are. That's just how user secrets work. Uh, but the thing that I wanted to show is actually this. So inside of the configuration of our application, you'll see that we say configure app configuration. We say to load the app settings JSON file right here. And then we say add environment variables and add user secrets. Now I did this just blanket all the time. That's not probably the right way to do it in the long run because I probably want to uh, set this up so that in production it doesn't try to use user secrets. So this app is always going to try to use user secrets, which uh, yeah, is not, not the best way. So I'll have to fix that eventually, but we should be able to get these val this value from uh, Twitch itself. So let's start working on that. So step one, we need to log into the dev section of Twitch. Uh, so I've logged into dev.twitch.tv and I've gone to the console page and I'm logged into my dev chatter account Not logged into the bot and this this is important because um, I am setting up an application under my user account. So I am telling twitch. Hey, I'm creating an application other people are going to want to log into that application and when they do I want you to um, authorize their access to my application. So when someone authorizes, they'll go to a login page and Twitch will tell them, hey, Dev Chatter uh, set up this application called Color Switcher and wants to log you in. So if you went there, obviously from Color Switcher, that would make sense. You'd be like, oh yeah, I came from Dev Chatter Color Switcher and I'm trying to log in. And then it will list, here are the uh, here's the level of access that color switcher wants and most likely in color switcher I'm gonna want to be able to read chat and I think that's pretty much it <laughs> like re reading chat probably writing chat also because I want it to be able to communicate uh, to be able to say hi in chat and that's about it so then what uh, someone is going to do is they're actually gonna log in with their bot account and that'll get them connected so let's go ahead and register a new application so uh, the name of the application is going to be Color Switcher. So see it says displayed to users when authorizing your application. And then my redirect URL. Now this is important. Let's have a look and see, did I set up this app to run on a specific port? Um, doo -doo 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 -doo, that is the question, did I do it? Uh, it's in Maverick's launch settings. Is it actually running on that port? Um, that's a good question, isn't it? Uh, let me confirm that real fast, because I want to make sure that I get the right one. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, color switcher overlay properties. Uh, looks like it's running as port 5000 the way that I'm doing it. So because I'm connected uh, through the Visual Studio version. Um, you know what we could do? Um... Host builder dot. Um, no. 
Ooh, I forget how to do that. Um, you know what? I do that over in my other application. Let me go take a look. I do that in our... Uh, Uh, I do that in Interactive 7. Um, I know I set up the port number over there. So how do I do that? Uh, inside, so create default builder. And then... Oh, I'm you. That's a host. That's a web host. Host builder dot use um, URLs. There we go. All right, got it. All right. So now I need to put in the absolute URI for that. I think. So it's complaining right now because I'm changing while it's running. That's that's the only complaint it's got there. Okay. Um, Let's see, average guy, you, oh, I missed your question a while ago, sorry about that, but if you clone your code from GitHub, how would the code run if it's filled with user secrets? Oh, so, um, average guy, the way that it actually works, so when you clone the code down from, from GitHub, what happens is, um, everybody pulls down the code and it looks like this. So this is what the app settings looks like, and when they try to run it, it doesn't work. <laughs> so what you have to do to make it work is you create that user secrets file and you actually put in it, basically a version of this code that has the real value here and then that actually uh, gets run when you when you execute the application so when i run this application this is not the value at runtime this value gets replaced with an actual oauth token uh, okay so the other question i don't get why you don't just pipe the source code into the mainframe through the pri uh through the pipes oh yeah no 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 yeah uh so you just turn on the faucet and uh, all the all the bits go flowing into their browser that's how that works okay so i want to change this to actually specify what that url is that we're going to do here so um derp uh, hang on uh so I created a URI in my other example, so I'm just going to pull this down here so I can do the same kind of thing. Um, uh, do I need to do this? We're just going to localhost with an IP address. Okay, so... Does this want a URI or a string? String! Okay. Um, my existing one, is it running as... Uh, I forget if I connect. I did uh, port five. Uh, wait, nope. Color switcher. Did I do this on? Okay, I did a non-secure connection. Uh, it's a localhost connection, so I'm not terribly worried about it. Uh, so we're gonna say localhost colon. Uh, now I don't want to do five thousand, and the reason I don't want to do five thousand is because uh, every application that, that someone creates in Visual Studio and runs is going to be 5,000. So uh, if there are developers, they're going to be really annoyed if I use that number. Uh, so it doesn't really matter what number we pick. We can basically pick whatever, especially if we make this uh, configurable in some way. But for now, I'm not going to worry about that one. Uh, well, no, because uh, we need it to not be configurable. Yeah, we need it to not be configurable. Um, hmm... Because it ha always has to match because uh, it has to get sent back to us by um, by Twitch. Okay. Um, uh, this is a color switcher. It's not a not a not a thing I'm thinking of that absolutely is a color switching number. So let's do like, uh, I don't know, five, two, three, four. There we go. It sort of counts. People should be able to remember that. Not, uh, not if they're, uh, so that'll be the port number. So I need to take this value. Once I restart the application, it will use this value. Uh, but right now it can't because the application's running. So that's going to be our redirect URL. So we're telling Twitch, 
hey, after they log in, send them back to this URL, which means that when our application sends them there, it'll come back into our app. So this is where they'll be running uh, when things happen. Uh, so the next thing we need to do is we need to say, what is this? This is a chatbot. It's a chatbot. Uh, I am not a bot. Good, it agrees. Okay, so now we have our color switcher set up. It's right here, and you can see it's created and everything, and I'm going to go into manage it. And right here, someone is going, oh no, Brendan, you just showed your client ID on stream. Oh man, you messed up. No, I didn't mess up. I, the client ID is not actually secure. What I need to not do is I need to not show a client secret. Um... So that one I'd want to I'd want to keep hidden, but no, we don't have to worry about the client ID. That is actually safe for people to see, and and the reason why that's safe, you remember I told you that you go to a URL to log in. Well, that this is the key that's passed in that URL. So if you've ever done any kind of a, a single sign-on approach, you've seen the the client ID code of the of the application that sent you there. Uh, like you can look at it; it's in the URL. So it's not a, not a unique or hidden value. So don't worry about this one. Um, it's the other ones you need to worry about. So I'm going to go ahead and copy the client ID. Because uh, all that does is just define that this is, this is the app. All right. So now I want to go back into our application. I'm actually going to stop our, our running instance of this. It's going to keep going. Like the colors are going to keep going. But right now you won't be able to change the colors on my stream. So... You're stuck with those for a little bit, everyone. I apologize. I know, I know this, uh, like, I don't know, it's kind of a, almost like a dull magenta uh, that we've got on the stream right now. All right, so I copied the client ID. Now, I don't know where I want to put this yet, so I'm just going to make an authenticate um, Twitch authentication I'm actually just making a file this might not survive very long but I just want a place to type this in uh, that was supposed to be a lowercase d Brandon okay so that should be my client ID which I guess I could just make it into a constant public constant string with that value you are not naming that what you want to... Yeah, no, we're not... No. Um, um, I'm going to have to fix what it's doing there because it's trying to make that ridiculous, like, caps and, and underscores naming, which I don't want. Okay, so there's our client ID. Cool. That'll work. That's what we want. Um, so we need to do something else now. So I need to go back to... Um, the color switcher. What is my app context? Oh, that's uh, right. That's that's this setup. Okay, so so this creates our system tray application. So that's basically what this is. Notify icon is like that means like icon in the notification center. So that's that system tray. Um. <laughs> Thanks, Mihai. Yeah, that's the name I'm going to use. Okay, so the first item we have is an exit menu item. Um, the next one we're going to do is not going to be exit. Uh, we want to do... Um, Twitch off? Um, uh, update Twitch off item. Um, update Twitch OAuth. And when you click it, it is going to run something called update Twitch OAuth. And we'll actually do on update Twitch OAuth click. Uh, because these are event handlers, so I want to match the naming convention so that anybody that sees this knows, oh, that's an event handler. Because uh, they'll see an on something click. So they'll know, okay, this was an event handler that was clicked. And I want other developers, 
one of the main things when whenever you're programming, make sure that you follow conventions within whatever programming, uh, like platform framework, whatever you're using. Uh, it's very important to do that because you want any other developer that sees this code to look at that and immediately just, you know, just know what's going on. They need to see that and be like, oh, oh, that's an event handler. I got it. Whereas if you use that name and it wasn't an event handler, you've now confused the future developer. Okay. So we've got that one going. Now we need to put this in the actual list. So where did menu item get used? Ah, context menu right there. So I don't know whether these stack up or down, but I'm gonna go ahead and run this real fast. So this doesn't actually do anything. So clicking on it's just gonna throw an exception. Uh, but two things I wanna check. And that is, I wanna make sure that this application runs on the correct port number. So see, it just said hello from the bot. So it is connected. It got in here. And then I want to make sure, okay, good. So it has, it did put my context menu, the update Twitch OAuth is above the exit. So that's what we wanted. Uh, and if I click it, it's going to throw an exception. So I don't, I don't want to click it, but, <laughs> but it is there. And that's important. Okay. Uh, so, so that displayed. Let's go ahead. We'll stop the program again. Whew. Excuse me. Um, all right, um, so we have a visible icon, it displays, it has both values. So when we click on this, we want to do something. And that thing that we want to do is uh, call out to a web browser. So let's, let's go ahead and stub this in. Uh, open up a web browser to the uh, Twitch auth URL. Um, record the state, uh, uh, statit, state value. Uh, for uh, return from Twitch. And I'll explain what that is in a second. Well, to do. Um, okay. Um, so we just need to store that value and then send them off. And then we don't care if they click it again, that's fine. And we don't care if they finish. Um, that like, we don't, we don't care. Um, it makes no difference to us whether or not they actually uh, complete the operation. Uh, if they do, then yeah, cool, we're gonna save it. But if they don't, that does not make any difference to us. Um, okay, um, do, do, do. Uh, we need to not received to receive. Register the, ah, here we go. Okay. So, somewhere we need to handle the fact that we got this message back from them. So, let's talk about those couple of pieces. So, our web app is a little bit deficient right now because the only thing I put in here was a hub. I don't even have an API controller in here right now. So, we're going to want to add that in. So first off, let's create a folder of controllers. Um, and then inside of controllers, I'm going to right click add controller. And we'll say empty MVC controller. Because I think that's probably the way to go. So. Um, if you were to go out to uh, Twitch, what you would end up and, and read the instructions on this, which I'll bring up so you can see them, um, you will actually see that the way that this works is we send out uh, a request to them. Uh, hang on. Getting tokens, implicit flow. Yep, this is where we want to be. Um, so let's jump to OAuth. Uh, not code flow, OAuth implicit flow. So this is the one that we want to read. So essentially we send the user out to this URL. So let's, let's 
grab this, uh, oops, that'll be the home controller. We'll let that scaffold. Uh, and then after we send them this information, what we're actually going to receive back is the following response. So they will get redirected back to localhost and they're actually going to get sent to the home page. So because they're sent to the home page, that causes us a little bit of trouble. And the reason why is we're not like we're not a JavaScript application, we're not a client application, we're a web application. So they're going back to a JavaScript page and then we have to, from our own JavaScript, send it up to us. So that's what's a little bit weird about this, but we can make it work. Uh, and I guess this is still scaffolding. Thanks. Uh, I don't know what you're doing, Visual Studio. This is seriously a tiny little file. I don't know why you're wasting my time with this. It's not like I'm streaming or anything. It's not like, not like there's anything going on. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. Okay, so let's go ahead and put the URL. So this is the URL that it's going to go to, and that got really confused there. <laughs> there we go. Uh, so there's the URL that we're going to send them to, and we'll we'll put that together in a little bit. Yeah, I don't know why that scaffolding took so long. It was doing something weird, probably. Looking at references or trying to figure out if it could update something. I don't know. Okay, uh, here's an example of a response. So I need two things. In our controller, we both need to have an index that responds with a view. Got that. Uh, and in addition to having this, we need to have a, um, what's the word? Um, oh, actually, you know what? I could just put it on index. Uh, and make this an API controller. You know what? We're going to do that. We're going to do that. Which is really funny to make it do this now. Because we're now going to make it scaffold a new one. Uh, we're going to call it the Twitch Auth controller. Let's watch as it scaffolds another one for some reason taking forever. Okay, there we go. So there's our API controller. We don't need the home controller. I forgot. We made we set this up. Um, why do I have both of these pages doing this? Uh, that says that and replace that. Oh, that's my overlay. Okay, got it. Yep, I won't worry about that. That's signal our stuff. We're not really doing that. Um I guess I could technically communicate this back with SignalR, but that seems way overkill uh, since all I want to do is send in a single value. Uh, so the Twitch Auth controller is going to be right here, and it needs to have uh, a needs to have an endpoint. So, which I just realized I have an example of because I built one of these for another program. So we're going to do that. So I need to make an access token received. And then I need to do something with that value. So let's make access token received. I think that's a, a nice little good piece. Uh, before we go too much further, let's make a Twitch auth folder. We're going to move Twitch authentication into there just in case I keep it. Uh, but then we're also going to make another class called access token received. And I want to put some properties on it. So how do I decide what properties we're putting on it, you say? We're going to go back to this page real fast. And this is the example that they get redirected to. So this tells me all the properties they're going to send back to us. Uh, hey, uh, Hop, welcome. Thanks for that follow. Much appreciated. So if we take a look, these are the values. So we have an access token. We have the scope. We have the state. And we have a token type. So let's go ahead and add a representation of that data. So uh, we'll just we'll do it here even though I've written it once before. So we need a prop string access token. And then we need a prop string uh, scope. Prop string state. And a prop string token type. Now you might be saying, shouldn't we get more advanced with that? Couldn't couldn't scope be like 
broken up into into the individual pieces that it is because you'll notice the scope that comes back this could actually be multiple scopes uh, and then for the state uh, since I'm planning on sending in a guid, couldn't we make this a guid? And the short answer to that is, yeah, we can we can make that a guid if we want. Yeah, we can make the token type uh, be some kind of an enum or something. Um, but it's added complexity that doesn't really make a difference to our example here. And if you ever if you're implementing this yourself and you want to uh, add additional types to this information, make sure it parses all of the correct values. Sure, we're going to make sure the strings match. And if the strings match, it was going to be able to parse into the object that it was supposed to be anyway. So, uh, I'm not terribly worried about it. So, these are our values. Okay. So, in addition to that, uh, I'm going to make uh, two little constructors for us because I like having constructors. Uh, it's nice. It's convenient. So, let's go ahead and do that. <laughs> uh... Adam Base, thank you very much for the Twitch Prime sub. Uh, welcome to the Dev Chatter crew. Please uh, be sure to enjoy all of your Dev Chatter emotes uh, that you get access to. Uh, my my personal favorite is is this one, the shock emote. Um, but uh, yeah, we've got plenty of fun ones and uh, appreciate it. So. The other cool thing that I wanted to show is this one. So. Um, I made two constructors here. One of them is just the default constructor, so if someone wants to just make one of these, uh, which um, when we bind this to our controller, it's going to automatically use this one. Uh, but if I'm going to make one of these objects somewhere, I'm going to do this. Now, why did I create these two constructors if I don't really need both of them because uh, ASP.NET was going to use this one by default? Well, the short answer is because uh, if I go and test, if I write some unit tests for this, which I probably will at some point, it's, it was such a small project and mostly wasn't doing anything that I didn't really bother because it's just like, did this, like, it's basically just running the framework. We did so little that um, it doesn't really seem necessary to test the framework, but um, I want to actually make this application do some more stuff later, so I know that we'll need this when I do because I hate doing the object initialization approach uh, for anything where I'm going to really be declaring like four values on it like this. Where I'm going to have them and everything like that. It just seems silly not to not to make this available. So it's there, uh, which means we can put it here. So this is where uh, the value is going to just get created, right at that point. Now I need a way of communicating back to the other application. Um, oh yes, uh, Copper Beardy, that is a great thing to mention. Um, so uh, some people might notice that uh, during my streams I, I actually keep a couple of things just rotating on the side, uh, letting people know that I've got courses both on DevIQ and over on Pluralsight when that uh, does eventually switch over and, and mention Pluralsight as well. But the thing that Copper Beardy is talking about is uh, this weekend is actually a free weekend for people to watch courses on Pluralsight. Uh, so if you are someone that is interested in learning uh, some other uh, dev stuff when this stream is over or tomorrow or something like that, uh, there are uh, a lot of courses over there, including uh, courses by me, uh, and you can watch those uh, for free this weekend. So I think uh, if you go to their homepage, they probably have information on it, but um, uh, I, don't, I don't have a link handy to it. So, yep, they do those every once in a while, so worth checking out if you are interested in... Uh, finding some of that uh, that information uh, about you know all kinds of dev stuff even like things related to dev all right mediator so I'm gonna toss mediator in here um, and I'm just gonna toss it in the whole project for now which is not really like I could probably leave it out somewhere, but I'm not going to bother uh, thinking about it because that's not really part of my example here. But um, if you haven't used a mediator, this basically is a way of doing ev event style communication around your application. Uh, I do recommend it. Uh, so if you are someone that is going to use uh, that that kind of tool, I, I do recommend it. Uh, hey, SNB, welcome. Greetings. Uh, mediator. 
just go here and we'll take a look. Since I'm tossing it in the application, I should show everybody what it is and how it works. So Mediator, we did this part already. Uh, and he says he's got examples in the wiki. So basically the way that Mediator works is um, we register Mediator in the application. We tell it, hey, uh, you know, we're gonna be using Mediator. Uh, we're not using structure map, we're using ASP.NET Core. So we're just gonna do this. We're just gonna say add Mediator. Um, allowing you to register all handler, handlers and in the in the assembly. So yeah. So here's what we're gonna do. We are gonna jump over into our setup of the context. Did I not actually set up the IOC container anywhere? Did I seriously not? Uh, is it is it in my startup? Did I, yeah, it's over, it's gonna be over here. Uh, service collection. Did it have any specifications like do it before this? Okay, it doesn't mention that there's a specific place that I have to do it. So we're gonna say services dot add mediator and. Add mediate. Uh, really? It didn't like that? Well, let me try finishing and we'll just see if we get it. Um, uh, we'll get assembly for a type and it's going to be um, access token received is going to be the type. Type of access token received. Uh, maybe I have to build first. Um, Fetty, uh, oh, um, I had so I have worked with Crystal Reports, um, but, uh, but it's been like 15 years since I've worked with Crystal Reports at all. Um, uh, thankfully, yes, I did say that out loud. Um, add mediate no extension method for add mediator. Um, didn't I add mediator to this? Uh, is it, oh, is it part of the, ex I bet it's part of extensions. Uh, yep, it's part of this extension pack. I have to install this extension pack. Derp. All right. And what's the version? Uh, you know what? Let me just grab the package reference right from there just to confirm that I get the right one. There it is. Oh, and for anyone that doesn't know, um, so... You can use the package manager, you can use the .NET CLI, and they give you the command line operations for how to install these. You can also use the, the NuGet GUI that I was in a minute ago. Uh, but if you're running a like one of our modern projects, like a .NET Core or a .NET Standard project, you can actually just go in and copy the project reference, and it's literally th this code right here is what you can actually copy-paste from there and put it directly in the project that you want to have it. Uh, so. We go ahead and build just so it gets that dependency, and then we'll see how it works. Um, and yeah, uh, SMB is right there. Uh, you can check out the Dev Chatter Discord uh, if you are interested in uh, um, if you are interested in uh, asking people questions about various stuff. And that actually goes for anyone that's in here. If you want to just have a place where you can chat about programming stuff. Uh, with other people that are interested, uh, that is a good place to do it. Why? Oh, it's in the web project. Derp. I put it in the in the other project. That was foolish of me. Uh, mediator. Uh, which means I want to remove it from this one because this one doesn't need it. That one did need it. Import. There we go. Okay, so this will register Mediator. Now, what does Mediator do? 
So I mentioned that Mediator is sort of a way of disconnecting and running things in an almost event-like structure. It's a way of um, firing off notifications or requests that kind of just go into the void and you don't actually have to have a reference to the thing that is running it. Um, it it's a way of decoupling. Now the reason I'm doing this here is because I sort of have two separate applications that are running at the same time and I want them to communicate but I don't really want them to know about each other. I don't want the web application to really know that there's a WinForms application. I don't really want the WinForms application to know that there's a web, uh, there's a web application. That feels weird to me. So um, for that reason we're going to run Mediator and it's sort of going to be the middleman for that. Um, so I have access token received, but then I'm going to have um, uh, um, access roken access token uh, receive. You know this is not the best name, but I'm just going to call it access token received handler for now. Um, it, it's actually a pretty bad name, but meh. Put that in the correct place, please. Uh, put this in the correct place. We're going to update the namespaces on these. Because that's what we're doing here today. Moving that to the correct spot as well. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, so inside of here, I need to make this an I request handler. And... Uh, SNB is, <laughs> is uh, paying attention to what we're doing here. So the first thing here is the way that these work is um, both of these applications have access to this core application. So both the, the WinForms app and the web app have access to this. And they're both going to know about, um, they're, they're both going to be able to use these, these bits um, as, as like when they want to for things. Uh, so access token received uh, looks like this. And I'm going to make this an I request. Um, that has no return value, actually. Uh, maybe a boolean? I guess we could return back a boolean for whether or not it succeeded. Yeah, yeah, we'll return back a boolean. So basically what I'm defining here is, uh, and this, the IntelliSense, is kind of, the uh, little help text there is kind of hard to read. This is an interface from Mediator, and this is a request and this is the request type I should specify and its return value is going to be a boolean so that's going to be the response of this request so now when I go over to my handler I'm going to say that this handler uh, handles access token received events and when it gets them it is going to respond back with a boolean so everything should make sense there so far so we have handle the access token received uh, and this is the request. And then this is where we actually need to do something with it. So we get this value and we say, okay, cool. Um, now what? Uh, so let me go ahead and I'm going to borrow our code from our other application because... Uh, we registered a listener against this. Ah, here it is. Because I wrote uh, code that does this already. So we're going to say request.state. Uh, if it is the state that we're expecting, which we'll need to check that in a second. And if the request token is a bearer, then we want to uh, set the, the correct value, the OAuth token, and we will return back um, turn back true otherwise we return back false now this is automatically set up as a task of this because this is an asynchronous oper operation that is happening here. Um, so it could be that whatever this is, this save that we're doing here, is the piece that's actually async uh, when we do this. Uh, but we'll take a look at that in a second. Um, Uh, 
Okay, so it's going to create one of these. Um, it needs to accept uh, some kind of an object that's holding this. So we want to make sure that when we receive back this response that it is the correct one. We don't want someone to be able to just send us a bad token. Um, so in order to make that work, we need to save that state value somewhere. But for now, I'm going to do this. State matches equals that. Uh, whoops. True. Okay. Uh, and then the value that we're going to set is going to be um, do I use options somewhere? How do I pass around my token? How did the chat uh, chatbot get it? Yeah, there it is. Twitch settings. Oops. Uh, so the constructor for this is going to receive the I options Twitch settings, and it's actually just going to take the Twitch settings because we're going to do that. Uh, so, uh, according to Bo, uh, here's what we are using. We are using the uh, Twitch OAuth implicit flow authentication. So, um, you can actually read all about uh, how it's set up here and how it all works. Uh, this is actually the documentation. I'll toss this in chat, actually, so that you can uh, actually see what it is that I'm looking at here. Uh, but this is how it works. And, um, yeah. Okay, so for the Twitch settings, we're going to say Twitch settings dot uh, access token equals that value, uh, and then that should actually update the the actual value here. Now, this isn't. I do want to point out this is not saving it at this point. This is actually just modifying the in memory one. We will have to do something else to save it. Um, so let me just put this in here for now. Uh, save the change. But that should uh, switch it to the new value when we do that. Okay. Uh, we need to turn on that state as well. Uh, but before we do that, we need to go back to the my app context right over here. And in my app context, we need to keep track of that state before they get sent away. Uh, so right here we need this to have something so we'll call it the twitch authentication okay so we have the web host here uh, so web host dot um, services get service um, I think we can do it of T and say um, twitch authentication we should be able to do that and then inside of our startup, we're going to tell it that it's supposed to be able to create these. So just to make sure that it can, and actually I want to make sure there's only ever one in this whole application because it's going to hold state. So um, I'm actually going to tell it that this one is a singleton because it is going to have its own state and it is important that we not have, we have under no circumstance do we get another instance of this. Every single thing that ever takes this needs this specific one. It's going to store running information. So we're going to sort of use this uh, like a cache in a way. Uh, so that is our Twitch authentication piece. And uh, when we get one of these, I'm going to go ahead and just... Uh, wait, wait, what? No, not that. This. This whole thing. Yeah, Twitch authentication. There we go. So Twitch authentication is available now inside of here. 
Uh, and we're gonna go ahead and say underscore Twitch authentication. We're gonna say state add, states add, uh, state, I'm gonna do that. So I don't know why this is tabbing me over to that point. Something is wonky right here. String state equals guid dot new guid dot two string. So I'm just gonna make a guid that has, uh, that, that we're gonna call state. We're gonna store it in a collection of strings that I'm gonna put on here. So I'm gonna create a property called states. This is going to be a list of string called states. And I'm gonna make sure that it is always initialized and it's gonna start out empty. We're gonna put a value in when someone clicks the button. So if someone clicks the button saying, hey, I want to update my Twitch authentication. We're gonna add in a valid GUID that they gave us. Uh, so basically they're gonna generate a GUID, we're gonna store it, and we are then going to call out to um, the, uh, we're gonna call out to a web browser. Now I have some code in our other application, uh, the one that we, uh, the one that we did, um, uh, in Interactive 7. So that one also has the same concept in it. Um, where is the code for that? Um, this is just uh, a view model. Here it is. Okay. So that makes the URL. So I pulled that URL from there, but we're actually gonna use this one because it's a little bit easier. Well, actually we're gonna create it somewhere else, so I won't worry about that just yet. Uh, where did this get used? This is referenced here. So we're gonna do this. Uh, pretty sure I can get away with this here. Okay, so this needs to be the URL. Um, so, Underscore Twitch authentication. Uh, let's say get URL. So we're gonna say get URL on that. And actually this is a much better way to do this. So we're gonna do get URL and then we're gonna take this code here and hide that in there. States, there we go. Uh, and then we just need to return back the URL, which for that, I can steal this code. Uh, so we need, so I have the client ID, we need our redirect URL um, and the scopes and And then this is the URL. Uh, so, whoops. All right, here we go. Return back that URL. Yes, I know it's super ugly and long. Don't worry about it. So state needs to be a lowercase s because that because we used a local one here. Uh, we're grabbing our scope string from there. Uh, our response is going to be a token. We have our, we're going to set our redirect URL and we have a client ID. So the pieces that we're sending out, we're basically telling Twitch, Hey, I want to have this user, user authorize themselves. Client ID tells them what application I am. So in this case, it, we're telling it, Hey, I'm the color switcher. Uh, and then the redirect URL is, hey, when they're done authenticating and they, they have logged in, send them back to my redirect URL. So that says send them back to my application. Now, if I were building a web application, this would be the, the production URL of my app. Since I am building a, a client application, this is going to be a localhost URL. Uh, and that'll work just fine because the browser can redirect from like a browser, a, a page on the web back to a local host and it works just fine. The next step, we're telling it, hey, give us back an access token uh, when, when you do this. 
Uh, when they're when they're connecting, you need to ask for this set of permissions. And then the last thing is we say uh, return back this string to me. So when I tell it state, I just say, hey, make sure that I get this string back. Uh, and that's how I verify that they really are coming back from the request I made and not just it's not just a random request coming in. So that's that's what all those parts are. Okay. Uh, so we created the state value, we put it in here, we're going to add it into the collection so we can check for it later. Uh, on this, we don't need to read bits for this because this application is not doing it. Uh, we don't need to read uh, channel subscriptions, but we do need to get edits and reads. We don't need whispers, uh, and we don't need to see channel subscriptions. So basically, for this app, we just need to be able to see... Um, the uh, we need to be able to write to chat and read from chat. So uh, essentially edit permission and read permission on chat messages. And that's it. Uh, and then this is going to put them together. And the address that we're going back to is 5234. That's the URL we set up for our application. So that's our redirect URL. Oh, it's trying to do that. Why? Oh, yeah. Uh, I, it's not actually, so uh, I switched us from using the, the regular one. We're actually running the one in Visual Studio right now. So until I uh, run it, SNB, you can't change the color just yet. Okay, uh, so this piece is set up. That is the correct URL. That's going to get called over here. Uh, we're going to run this. We're going to get that we no longer need this. Um, we are recording the state value when we send that out. So when they click it, we're going to send a message out that says, hey, thing, do do the thing. And it's going to do that. So this is going to open up a web browser for us when we click that. Uh, and then uh, they're going to log in and it's going to come back with an OAuth token. When they come back with the OAuth token, it is going to uh, go to our index page, which I'm going to have to write up the code to make this index page work, which we'll do in a second. The index page is going to call into our Twitch auth controller, sending us those values uh, that we received. So it's going to send those in here. When we get these, we need to fire off a mediator me message. So let's go ahead and grab an instance of mediator. So I mediator. Remember, we added this in so that we could do this communication. Uh, so we put that there and we say mediator. And we want to send our access token received message. This is going to get us back. See how it's saying task of bool? Um, uh, maybe result. Yeah, we'll say result. Uh, this is going to await that, which means this is going to be an async uh, task of I action result. Um, and I'm going to leave it as post, not post async, because I don't need to say that. And then um, if result, then return OK. Otherwise, uh, we're going to return back. Um, uh, I don't know what we're going to return back. Problem? What is problem? I don't know what that means, but sure, that sounds great. Um, failed to save auth token. I don't know. There you go. Bad in bad is bad status. Uh, no. Uh, either way, that's that's good enough. Uh, that in some way should indicate it. Uh, we can fix it up later. <laughs> I just wanted to have that piece in there. Okay, uh, so I mentioned that we need to get this page set up to accept those. So important thing that I want to mention, the way that we actually were contacted, we get contacted by Twitch when it does the authentication is this. And th the communication that it sends us back is, it makes sense why they do it this way, sort of, but it's kind of annoying. So. They're sending us URL fragments. They're not sending us like query string parameters. So you can tell that because that that's what this is. Instead of being a question mark, uh, it is you know the number sign. It's a it's like hash whatever. So that means that this value is not sent to the server request. This is only sent through the browser. 
Now, the reason why they do this is this is a little bit more secure because there was not a web request made with this value out to the web server yet. So this came back to the client. So in case I didn't need the value anywhere except the client, I can get away with this. I can just use it from the client and, that, and that's fine. And it never had to go across an unsecured connection over the web because when they sent it back to my computer, that was an HTTPS communication to me, which is fine. And then within the browser, without going out to, to the web anywhere, it added this URL and redirected me to localhost. These values right here did not leave my browser. That's important. However, since I'm going to localhost, I'm not worried about then immediately sending them up. Part of, part of the way that this would work in other cases, if they sent this back to you and your application was an HTTP application, when you send this up to the server, that would be bad. So... Uh, it could be that you are then going to send, you know, send them to an HTTPS page instead or something like that. I don't know. That'd be a weird way to structure it. But in our case, we're localhost. I'm not worried about it. If your OAuth token is going from your browser to your same computer, not, not like, I mean, it's not totally safe, but it's also not all that dangerous. So we're going to do this. I guess it could be unauthorized, but uh, if we got to that page, they are authorized SMB. That's the weird part. So if they if they get back here, that just means there's an error in saving. Um, okay, so here's what we need to set up. So first off, I set this page up originally just as an example um, signal our page, which we're not going to do now. This instead is going to be uh, so we're not going to use signal R. We're going to use Axios. So I just tossed in a CDN uh, to Axios. So we're gonna pull in that. Uh, Axios, if you don't know, is just a library that is frequently used for um, making like Ajax requests. So if you wanna to post to a, uh, a web server, that is an easy way to do it. Okay, this is the signal R code that we had there before. I don't need anything in the body. So we're gonna replace the signal R code with this instead. And I'm going to walk through this so that you know what it is. I just pulled this from our other application where I previously did this code. So what we're doing here is we're saying, hey, if there was uh, essentially a hash, that means if we had a fragment in our URL, that's, that, uh, that's the fragment we were talking about, go ahead and grab the fragment. So take the hash and then substring, uh, we're going to say essentially remove the hash sign because we don't care about it. So that's why we're substring one in here. This says grab a substring starting from the second character and all the way to the end. Uh, so that chops off uh, the first character. We then say go ahead and split that on the ampersand. So if we look at this code here you'll see that uh, there's an ampersand between each one of the parameters. So we split that and then we take this and I said to map it so take those values, map those four values onto uh, a new set of strings. So we're going to get uh, essentially an array of strings here. And each string I want to split on the equals sign and take the second value. So if we look, if we take this string and we split it on the equals sign and take the second value, we're going to get this. On this one, again, if we split on the equals sign, we're going to get this value. And in here, we're going to get this one. So these are essentially grabbing the uh, values that we want, not the parameter names. So that pulls them out like that. Um, and then we're just going to create this. Now, what I could do instead is actually treat those as pieces, query string and put them out. And yeah, that would be a better approach. I should probably do that in the next version of this, but hey, it'll work. So I take this data, uh, I put it together and I'm going to send this up to our API controller. Uh, which if I take a look at this, it's going to be here. It's an API and controller. And then this is a, a little convention placeholder here uh, that, that tells uh, Web API in ASP.NET uh, that the URL this is supposed to respond to is API and controller name. So Twitch auth is the controller name. So that is the URL that we're supposed to be going to. And then we're going to console log the response that we get back from this, uh, which I should probably do something better than console logging it because we're not actually doing anything right now. So, eh.
Uh, so that's going to do an Axios post to that URL, sending up our data, and then that should work. Um, we're going to test out the pages first just to make sure that we can hit them. Um, because obviously that would be bad if they failed. Um, when we hit the URL, we go here, we grab Mediator, we send the values in, into Mediator. Mediator is watching for this. This handler is actually going to run. It is going to receive this value right here. It's going to take these and... Will that work? No, um, from, from result, that's the one I wanted, yeah. Task from result true. Yeah, there wasn't actually any async code in this, uh, the way that we wrote this, so it didn't actually need to be async, so that's kind of silly, but it just happened that we didn't have to do it. Okay, um, we're not checking that value. We need to have um, not the Twitch settings. What do we need? We need the Twitch authentication. We need Twitch authentication. Twitch authentication. So we're going to save an instance of that. And we need to say state matches if the Twitch authentication dot state contains um, our state request.state. So essentially we're saying um, if we had the value they came back with then we're gonna say yeah okay that was valid. Um, and that ought to work. Um, uh, save the change to do save the change. Uh, yeah we still need to do that. But I think everything in here should work now. We're going to find out if those URLs work. So I'm going to start up the application. We're going to check and see whether or not we can get to those URLs. Because I haven't even tried getting to the index page in this new version. Okay. So there's the bot running. Localhost 5234. What we said the URL is. Aha! I can't get to the page. Uh, overlay. I bet that I don't... Oh, by the way, this... So if you want to see the secret, this is what's actually running in my uh, in, in my stream. It's it's this page. Uh, so... This thing right here, that's that's what's that's what's there. So if I... Uh, so the browser one, the one actually in my stream is disconnected right now, but you could do like Lime, for example, and it's going to change in here. So see, change to Lime, because this is actually what's connected to it. Thing. So that's actually, th there's the magic. Okay, um, so what I need to do is I need to say aspnet core de uh, enable default, default pages. So default pages isn't working because of the way our application uh, is set up, so not... Yeah, how do I set up uh, default pages? Yeah, default pages, yeah. Mm. Wait, hang on. Uh, add pages route in line index route. Uh, okay, I think he did it that way. Um... That actually might work. We we might actually be able to do it that way. Let me let me try that. So inside of startup, in this, where did I add MVC? Did I add MVC? I didn't add MVC. Yee. Um. App dot use default files. Yeah, maybe that's what it is. Default file mapping. And app.use 
uh, MVC with default route. I think I'm just gonna say, I think I'm gonna not specify the route. What's this complaining about? Do I need to? Oh, I'm using endpoint routing. Oh man, I forgot about that. Um, Yeah, uh, endpoints. Map controllers adds endpoints for controller actions to the without specifying any routes. Name patterns, defaults, constraints, and data text. I think I can. Um, I think I can just say map controllers. And then I think it'll use the routes I've defined on the controllers. I think it's going to let me get away with that. We're going to check and find out by running it and see what happens. Uh, so when this app gets going, uh, we will open this page again. We'll know the app is running because the bot should say hi in chat when he when it gets in. Uh, oh, um... Uh, unable to find the required service, please, please add all the required services by calling add controllers inside the add control. Oh, uh, I it's it's right. I didn't do that. Yeah, there's an exception, and I didn't call this inside of the startup. So, um, uh, services dot add uh, MVC. Like this. Is there any options stuff I want to set up in here? Let's have a look. Um, cell port, output format, and model binder providers. No, I don't think we want to do anything weird. So we'll just say Adam VC. Uh, we forgot to add it. Yeah, so you can't actually use MVC unless you've added MVC. <laughs> Derp. <laughs> I got thrown off by that endpoint routing thing. Okay, so the bot said hello now, so it is working this time. So this page should still work. Okay, good. So that one reloaded. Uh, Index.html should work just fine. It does. We got to the home page. Um, and it should work from here. Ooh, it does not. Mm. So we don't. We still don't have the default page. Um, API. What is the one that we wanted to have work? Um, my controller's not. Uh, where's my controller? Twitch auth controller. API slash Twitch auth. Uh, oh, I'm supposed to post to it. Derp. There is no getter. Um. So I wouldn't be able to check this one this way. Uh, let's add a getter real fast. Uh, why did I type post derp? Uh, public async task of I action result uh, get. Uh, it will have no parameters and it is going to just say uh, return okay. Hi. <laughs> um yeah why why did i make it uh, it doesn't need to be async i think i can have some that are async and some not in the same uh controller and it should be fine with it uh yeah so copper beardy i could just use postman but this is just a nice way to just be able to type it in then i don't even have to bother with postman on that one but yes in, in order to actually test like whether or not we can post data to that i could use postman to check that but I think it's just that it isn't running at all, and for that I don't want to... Uh, oh, it is! Okay, so see? Confirmed. 
Um, uh, this is a post uh, post only uh, API. So that's a valid thing to have in there. This is a post only API. Uh, it's just the purple one, uh, squiggly is actually just there to let me know that I'm making changes to it uh, while it's running so that change won't be reflected, which is fine. Okay, so, um, but the index page uh, works just fine, but not with nothing. So let's take a look at the endpoint routing. There has got to be a way to make that work. Endpoints. Map fallback to file? Okay, that could work. So pattern, file path. So if you had nothing, send me to file, send me to that file, the index.html file. I mean, it's kind of kind of hacky to put it in that way, but um, I'm still surprised use default files didn't work the way I thought it would. Okay, no exception. So takes me to the home page. Can I still get to the other pages? API slash Twitter. Uh, yep, this is a post only API. So we can definitely hit the API. So let's um, I guess let's let's find out what happens. Um, I guess we'll try the code. So this is the page it should definitely be hitting. Uh, so um, you're gonna have to trust me that I am right clicking on the system tray icon and I am gonna click update Twitch off. Boom, okay, here it is. So it brought me out here and um, I'm supposed to log in. Now I'm already logged into Twitch so I don't actually have to type in my credentials and it comes up and it says, uh, so if we look at the URL, we're doing an authorize. That's the client ID of our color switcher app. Here's the URL it's going to redirect us to. It's going to give us a token. Uh, we're asking for chat edit and chat read. And this is the GUID that uh, my system tray application is looking for. It's that one right there. And then, um, so I so w when I click the authorize button, I'm going to put you guys on a hide screen for a minute. So I apologize. I'm going to hide the screen because it is going to put my OAuth token into the URL. And I don't want to display that. I know, I'm crazy like that, not wanting to show an OAuth token on stream. What a wild, wild concept. Okay, so created less than a day ago, and it's telling me it's going to redirect me there, and it's pointing out that my thing is not op operated by Twitch, and you have to trust Color Switcher, and uh, here comes the hide screen. So no peeking, I'm going to click this button, and we're going to see what happens. So I click the button, it redirects me, I see an access token, uh, and uh, it posted the data and I got back an okay. So yeah, uh, that's kind of cool. Let me go ahead and check one more thing. So I'm going to go to this page, localhost uh, 5234, and we're going to go to API Twitch Auth, uh, because I want to, at this point, uh, see if I can't find out what that value is. Um, I don't have it at that moment. Um, how can I get it? Oh, I know what I'll do. Um, I will go to my app context and I will catch this before it starts that. I apologize, everyone. I just want to see what's going on with this. I'm going to click that button. Okay. Now I want to see 
Uh, so I, I, yes, I do still have you guys, um, blocked there for a second, because I don't want to, uh, reveal stuff that would be bad to reveal. Oh, do I seriously lose access to the chatbot once it's running? That's funny. Uh, okay, so immediate window. Let me grab the chatbot. And it's got a Twitch settings file. Um, inside of the chatbot, I need to... I'm going to catch it right there. I apologize, everybody. I need to just try something here. I just want to see my settings. Username. Is that my new access token? Uh, hang on. Hang on. Hang on. We're almost done. I'm about to confirm this. Because I need to confirm that it's not using the one from... Uh, I need to confirm that the one it's using is not from my... Um, uh, words. Um, uh, my uh, user secrets file. That's the word I was going for. Um, uh, I forget where the user secrets file is, to be honest. No, it's not there. Um, do, 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 user secrets folder. I wish I had that context menu. You guys have heard me comment about that a million times. Uh, app data, Microsoft user secrets. Okay. Uh, so that's where it is. So, uh, wait. App data. What? Where, where is it? And it's not just app data. It's, is it app data? Uh, is it roaming or local? I can't remember. Microsoft, user secrets. Okay, it's roaming. Um, now I need to look in my application real fast and just see where it shoved it. So it's that nine, it's this one. So there's the file I need to open. That is not the OAuth token in my user secrets folder, which means it switched. So awesome. I'm gonna stop the application so I don't accidentally show a uh, an OAuth token here. Uh, so we need to make sure that that page closes, but hey, that works. So awesome. All right. I just wanted to check that. Sorry about leaving you on that hide screen so long. Uh, I just didn't want to accidentally show an OAuth token on screen. You know how it is. Um, that that would be a mistake, to say the least. Uh, definitely don't want to show one of those. Uh, however, I think that is pretty darn cool. Uh, so that actually completes the cycle. Uh, what is going on here in chat? Uh, post-apocalyptic API. Uh, no, fuel snable. No, 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 not post-apocalyptic. This one triggers the apocalypse. So I don't know. It's maybe it, maybe because you're using it now, it's pre-apocalyptic. I don't know. One of those. Now, before someone notices that I was actually drinking a, uh, a beverage from the uh, Coca-Cola company, I will uh, quickly switch over to one from the Pepsi-Cola company. Because after all, you know, 
loyal loyal to the empire <clears throat> okay so um what did, what did we accomplish let's have a look uh why did i did not mean to do that so we set up a connection uh wait what what the we got rid of a reference to Microsoft Aspect Core app inside of the Color Switcher project. We did? Okay. Uh, and I'm not sure I meant to do that. But apparently it's running fine without it, so I'm okay with removing it. Um, we set up this page uh, to... Uh, VR authentication page. This one is... Let's see, uh... Mediator added to that one. Uh, this one we added the color switcher. That's that. Uh, we added in our handler here. Uh, so yes, we still need to save the change. This is the actual authentication piece, including a client ID, which is just hard-coded into the app right now. Uh, that is... This must have been what it was scaffolding. It must have added in these pieces when it was scaffolding, which is really irritating. Um... And then that's the controller that uh, receives the data. And this is our startup that adds that as a default page, gives us controller access, adds the controller, adds mediator, and adds our little authentication handler. So. All right, so let's go ahead and get this committed. Uh, and this will be uh, Twitch, oh, Twitch OAuth. So that'll be our Twitch OAuth branch. Uh, bring my changes with me, please, because I'm going to commit them as soon as we're over here. And there we go. <clears throat> so not bad. I think, uh, I think that went pretty well. Um, Less, less than a couple of hours with explaining to everybody what I'm doing along the way to uh, set up a Twitch OAuth token. That's not bad at all. Um, including some figuring some things out because it doesn't work exactly the way that I would expect it to at all points. Uh, the other couple of things that I need to make sure that I do, that response that we get to that page, um, I need that page to close itself uh, at the end of that. So... Um... Close tab from JavaScript. So window dot close. Uh, yeah, no, we don't need to do anything, anything fancy like that. Um, I don't know whether it's worth logging it if we succeeded, but sure. We'll just close the window. So after they authenticate, close the window, and that should work. Um, next, we need to save that data somehow. That's the last piece that really needs to happen, is just the saving of that data. Save this change. Uh, 
Um. Yeah, that's what I want to do. I want to update this in code. Uh. Let's see, in memory provider, mining and poker, so maybe storage. Um, uh, reload on change. How do we change it? Hey, Stool Penner, welcome. I don't remember how to do this, so what's this? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's. Um, Hang on one second, everyone. Um, I just want to look at something. I want to see if if it maybe changed the uh, the built version of this, the like debug uh, like app settings file. Did that get modified? I assume not. Okay, it didn't. Good. I didn't want it to. Oh, I have to trigger it again. Hang on. We're going to go trigger that again. Because cause we're not missing that. Not Stool Penner's 13 month. What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. No more. <laughs> Stool Penner! Uh, 13 month streak. Uh... So yes, well, welcome to the stream, and uh, thank you for the uh, 13 months of hanging out. That is awesome. Yes, uh, we have a a quite a few Grinadons here in the chat. Always like the the Grinadon. They're they're ridiculous. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. No, no. Our current set of emotes. I'm a big fan of our current set of emotes. I really like that one a lot, and the high is really nice. Uh, and then think is is that's one of the other ones that I really like. Um, the dance is not bad. Um, it it kind of is what I was looking for, but yeah, no, they're really fun. I like them because um, I then use them all over the rest of Twitch. Uh, as you probably know, uh, uh, I actually have a, a second Twitch account that I use for like gaming stuff and things like that. It's my personal account, so this is the one I stream on, and I don't stream on the other one. And it's funny because I end up having to pay for my own subscription to my own channel. So I give Twitch money to have access to my own emotes. Which is weird. You'd think they might let you, you know, let you be like, no, no, I have this. And like, just let that other account be subbed. But no, no. They do it that way, so. Um, what if I actually saved it as the options? What if I save the options? Let's do that. Let's try this. So we're going to save this as the options. Say dot value. Do the options have the ability to save or something like that? I don't actually know, to be honest. I'm just guessing that they might have something. No? Um... So yeah, let's back that out. Put that right back the way it goes. Um, oops, that's not the one I was looking for. That's not the one I was looking for either. Um, the issue is that there's a JSON provider which is not about the saving the configuration files. You can see in the source it does not use the set method of the configuration provider. Um, in I configuration. Uh, I configuration. Oh. Uh, try uh, Uh, 
Um, but I want to set that value every time. Configurations, configuration. Um, so can I do it with iConfiguration? Let's let's try it. Um, uh, what's a thing I can easily trigger? Uh, maybe we make a small console app. You know what? Let's do it. Let's make a small console app. We'll we'll give that a try. So I will make a new console app. Um, that's a when you when you want to try something out, just this is a great way to just you know give something a quick uh, look see. Um, where do I want to store this? Uh, in my scratch folder, I guess. Okay. Um, let's put this in configuration changing. Sure. That's fine. We'll make a quick console application about changing configuration. Since it's a .NET Core app, it should use an app settings. Uh, so this should uh, should be pretty much the same thing we're doing here. And I just want to see, can we change this value? Which actually, it's funny that I made it a console app. I probably should have made it a web app. So I'm going to make it a web app because if I do it as a web app, it's actually going to be wired up with all the, uh, I won't have to do anything extra in order to get, um, IOC set up correctly. So we'll just do it as a web application. So there it is. Um, oh, it'll be quick. Um, Guess we'll just do an MVC app. We won't need HTTPS on this. <clears throat> All right. So inside of here, let's uh, let's actually just get rid of this one. We don't need it. I created it for no reason. Uh, so this is our startup app. It has this app settings right here. And we're going to say uh, foo bar. All right. <clears throat> so we have the setting foo uh, with a value bar. Uh, inside of our startup, we do have a section that takes in configuration. Let's make a view page that has access. Let's make a controller, I should say, that has that pulls in that value. So we're going to give this a, a C tour that is going to take in an I configuration. Config, configuration. I can type configuration. There we go. Because configuration is um, where it puts, it is like, uh, that is where it does the... Where's the app settings JSON coming in here? Did that did that get set up in program? How did that get set up? Create default, but where... Where does that get set up? I thought that got set up right in here. Configuration. It's configuration, so it just sets it up here. Maybe I have to add it if I want to have, uh, like, user secrets or something. I won't worry about it. We won't worry about it. We're just going to try it. Configuration. And the key is going to be foo. Value equals that. Okay. Uh, uh, so then we're going to do equals uh, fizzbuzz. There we go. Um, 
Now the question is whether it's going to write that back to the file or not. Just this occurrence um, changed. We're hoping. All right, so I just need to hit the home controller and it should automatically create this thing and run it. Because I don't know whether we can change that value or not. I don't know what that does. I've never tried changing the value while we're running. Um, okay, so it appears to have actually changed the value, but this probably just changed the running value, not the one that's actually like in the app. Um, so I'm going to open up the scratch folder really fast and check configuration changing uh, in the web app, the bin, the debug, netcore, uh, there should be... What? Um... It didn't even send out the app settings JSON, did it? So it got the foobar at the beginning. So it definitely had it. Um, but it's like the app didn't even actually build it. Because uh, this probably isn't actually set to... Yeah, because it's content. It's a do not copy content. Copy of newer. Does that actually need to get copied? Forget how that uh, forget how that wires up. So loads the page, runs the controller, gets us down here. There's bar, there's fizzbuzz. Yep, settings JSON is here, and it is unaltered. Uh, is there a way to write? Is there a way to write it back? Configuration, configuration dot bind, attempts to bind to the given object instance. There's get values, there's no set values. Yeah, there's no set. So we can't actually set the values. I mean, we sort of are, but I don't think it's actually changing them when we do that. Huh. <laughs> yeah, I'll just use T4 for that. That was a great plan. Thanks, s &B. Um, I wanted this page. Uh... It's not even with the saving the You can create your own provider and implement it. I don't want to store there. Yeah, and configuration. The S. Uh, the uh, app settings is automatically in here. Huh. How to update values in, in uh, yeah, that's the one I want to do. So that brings in the values. Writable options. There's an interesting idea, actually. So make writable options, which is an iOptions interface. And then what's it do? Hosting environment configuration root and the file. So you'd have to create this. Um, and then actually apply it back. Okay. 
Um, yeah, I could see us doing this for for a way to do that. That's not uh, that's not crazy. Um, yeah, no, I like that. That's um. That that's a reasonable way of doing that. Um, that's not that's not completely crazy. Um, so I am gonna save that URL right there. We're gonna read that uh, in order to make that work. But I think that'll actually do the trick. Uh, and I'm glad we investigated that other one, even though it didn't pan out. Okay. That's closing the window, that's adding that. Okay, that's great. Hooray! We got stuff working. I'm always happy when we get stuff working. Makes things way better. <clears throat> okay, um... Well, uh... What is it? What is this? Uh, uh, by the way, what's T4? I know the T100, which is a bicycle model. Uh, and then there's, um, what? Uh, there's, there's a lot of... T, um, T, uh, I'm, trying to think of another, I'm trying to think of another T reference. There's, there's Mr. T. Uh, check out my stream VOD. Oh, yeah. Uh, you've actually been doing T4 stuff, s &B? That's actually pretty cool. Um, so, uh, a couple of things I do want to mention. I am going to wrap up the stream here. Uh, if you are not yet uh, a member of our Discord, I do recommend you join it, as it is a great place to uh, chat with me and the other Dev Chatter uh, community members. Uh, so, go ahead and check that out. And the code that we were working on today, as well as a lot of the other code that we work on here on the stream, is actually out on our GitHub at github.com slash devchatter. So if you want to build your own system tray application that spins up a web browser, uh, can authenticate into Twitch, and, you know, respond to things that chat types in. So, uh, for example, in ours, I could run this application, and, um, which actually, now that I think about it, I should adjust this uh, to use the new URL instead of the old one. Why did I open up that? Uh, I'm going to do this real fast, because we need to. Um, alerts and overlays. Just open up this folder of stuff. The color switcher overlay needs to get its URL changed to this one. Uh, but it's not going to run yet, because I need to start up the app, because it's not going. So I apologize about that. Uh, Jen's Duck? Was that Jen's Duck? I think I saw Jen's Duck there for a second. Ugh, there we go. Go Ducks! Quack, quack. Okay, so the app should be running. Uh, let me go ahead and, uh, click the buttons. Did it go? There it is! Okay, cool. So this is our new, uh, new, uh, version of this code. Should work the same as the old version of the code. Yep, yeah, good old S and B. So uh, there we have it. Our color switcher is working fine. I updated it to the new, uh, I guess, um, port number that we're using. Uh, so that is actually like just forced into the application, which we need to do because uh, we had to set up Twitch to give us OAuth access in order for that to work. So uh, it is important that 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 URL match because uh, if you change it, then obviously everything's going to break. <clears throat> um, let's see, uh, so yeah, that's, uh, that's the piece that we got working there. Um, yeah, other than that one, um, I will finish clicking out my buttons. Uh, so I tossed a Discord link, I tossed a GitHub link. Uh, if you missed any of our past episodes or you want to see how we built any of this stuff, if you want to see how we originally built this system tray application that runs Windows Forms and spins up an ASP.NET uh, application uh, running inside of it, 
Uh, we did that all as one big stream. You can actually find that as well as many other videos out on our YouTube channel, as well as the video section here on Twitch for a lot of recent stuff. Uh, I want to thank everybody for hanging out with me today. Uh, I had a lot of fun programming this with all of you, and I am looking forward to our next stuff. Uh, so I'm not sure what we're going to do in our next episode, but I want to finish up our Interactive 7 application that ties into Final Fantasy 7. I want to get that released, built, and available for people to use. Uh, so one of the... There, I've outlined a couple of the remaining tasks that I have left to do with, with that. Uh, and then I also want to get either an installer or get the application packaged up so that it is uh, dead simple to just start using one or the other. I haven't decided yet, uh, but either way, I'm going to try to do that part on stream at least a little bit so that I can show you all how you do that because that's something that I'm not super familiar with and I think a lot of others aren't either. Uh, packaging up software is not something most of us do because we run it for ourselves most of the time. Uh, so it's not a step that we're usually required to do. Okay, uh, let me go ahead and run the credits here. I just noticed I had the wrong message up the whole time and no one yelled at me about that. So uh, I want to thank our moderators for helping out today. So SNB, thank you, and uh, Stool Penner, thank you for hanging out today. And uh, uh, Hop4AP, uh, thank you for that follow. And Adam Basin, Stool Penner, thank you for the sub and the resub. Uh, always appreciated. Uh, appreciate have everyone uh, hanging out today. I look forward to seeing you next time. Hopefully it's not uh, like, you know, uh, given this week it might end up being Saturday. But um, either way, I am looking forward to seeing all of you soon. Uh, and uh, I'm hoping to get us switched off of this uh, very shrunken down schedule and get us into having more episodes again. Uh, so it's not this once weekly uh, episode that we've been doing uh, lately. I'm hoping to get us back to more streams during the week. So, either way, thanks for hanging out, everyone. I will see you next time. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and uh, happy coding. Bye.